and talking of win-win deals. What if you had no say in deals regarding your future? What if your future was under threat but you had no legal rights to defend yourself? Well, thankfully for human beings, that's taken care of. We all have legal rights. We have a way to represent ourselves and be represented. We have a way to safeguard these rights, to fight for our basic rights and seek redressal. But have you ever wondered about the rights of non-human beings? What about their legal rights? Non-human entities like trees, animals, rivers. Well, according to some experts, granting legal rights and protection to animals, trees and rivers is essential if countries want to tackle the impact of climate change and biodiversity loss. The authors of a report titled Law in the Emerging Bio Age say legal framework frameworks have a key part to play in governing human interactions with the environment and biotechnology. The report for the Law Society, the professional body for solicitors in England and Wales, talks about how the relationship between humans and our planet could change in the future. We in fact spoke to one of the co-authors of this report. Here's what she said about the importance of ensuring legal rights for non-human entities. What is really important about this research project, which we did for the Law Society UK, which is a membership organization of legal professionals. And what they were concerned about was how the law profession itself could start working more proactively to ensure that not only are we protecting the rest of the web of life, the animals we share the planet with, the, the plant life we share the planet with, our very ecologies, in fact, this is not asking for too much. Some nations like Ecuador and Bolivia have already set out rights for the natural world. There is also a campaign to make ecocide a prosecutable offense at the International Criminal Court. What is ecocide? The destruction of the natural environment by deliberate or negligent human action. Look at what's already happening in Spain. The endangered Ma Menor Lagoon has been granted legal status as a person, meaning the legislation recognizes the lagoon's right to protection, conservation and restoration. Also look at how businesses, corporations are also protected. In most countries, a corporation has the same rights as a natural person to hold property, enter into contracts and to sue or be sued. So asking for legal rights for non-human entities is important, more so given how climate change has been making its impact felt, thanks to the action of human beings. Also given how animals are increasingly under threat. A story from New Zealand has been making headlines. Nearly 500 pilot whales have died in mass strandings on remote New Zealand islands. And stories like these are unfortunately becoming a lot more frequent. So it all sounds good. Or non-human entities need to have legal rights. But how exactly will this work out? What would the immediate challenges be? The authors of this report outlined how widespread adoption of rights for non-human life forms would radically change the legal and ethical balance between humans and living systems. The report does say that giving rights to non-human entities would raise necessary questions regarding the liability for environmental damage as well as compensation for the damage caused. The development in biotechnology has also raised questions about the ethics of bringing back species from extinction. And this comes as scientists are also exploring reintroducing woolly mammoths, for example. There have also been discussions regarding wiping out mosquitoes which carry malaria and other diseases. All said and done, such moves to push for rights for non-human entities raise significant questions and nudges like these are the need of the hour. How seriously this push is taken, however, is a different matter altogether. 
We on now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.